Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. This is Oxhorn, and I am out of town traveling for the next few days. But I didn't want to leave you guys empty-handed, so I recorded this video to publish while I was away. It's going to be a little shorter than usual, but I hope you guys like it. Today's topic is on the Ten Penny Tower Player Home Suite. Now, this is not a comprehensive lore video about Ten Penny Tower. Ten Penny Tower is really interesting, and we will get to that tower and deal with all of the side quests that go on there. But right now, I just want to focus on the player home. To get the player home, we need to find a man named Mr. Burke in Megaton. We find him inside Moriarty's saloon. My, my. Just when I'd all but given up hope. My dear girl, I am very happy to make your acquaintance. I am Mr. Burke. And you? Well... You are not a resident of this putrescent cesspool. That makes you a rather valuable individual. This is a man of class and refinement, I'm sure. He'll appreciate it if we are polite. Mr. Burke, is it? Please continue. I find myself enthralled. Finally, someone with a modicum of civility and common sense. I represent certain interests, and those interests view this town, this... Megaton, as a blight on a burgeoning urban landscape. You have no connections here, no interest in this cesspool's affairs or fate. You could assist us in erasing this little accident off the map. The undetonated atomic bomb for which this town is named is still very much alive. All it needs is a little <laughs> motivation. I have in my possession a fusion pulse charge, constructed for a singular purpose. The detonation of that bomb. You'll rig it to the bomb, then you'll get paid. Handsomely. What do you say? Now, of course, we can respond to this a number of ways, but my goal right now is to get the Ten Penny Tower player home, so I'm going to use the Black Widow perk to negotiate a higher price. Five hundred, you say? Well, uh, um, yes. Yes, I think that can be arranged. I must admit, I find you enchanting. Uh, do this for me, and there's no telling how far my gratitude will reach. Take the fusion pulse charge, place it into the bomb, then meet me at Tenpenny Tower. There I will show you what true power is. With the fusion pulse charge in hand, we can head on down to the bomb in the middle of Megaton and rig the bomb to explode. I shall be stricken death to hear the thunder of his voice. Once it's rigged, we have a long walk from Megaton to Tenpenny Tower if we have not already found it. We see the tower loom in the distance as we get close. It's a beautiful sight. And when we arrive, we find a ghoul named Roy Phillips arguing with a man on an intercom. Let me in, goddammit! How many times do we have to go through this? You're not getting in. This is part of the quest I mentioned earlier that we don't have time for today, so we're going to skip it. But we can tell security on the intercom that Mr. Burke is expecting us. He's expecting you? Why didn't you say so right away? Just a moment. All right. Come on in. But I warn you, we're watching you. Past the gate, we open up the main door to enter the lobby. To find Mr. Burke, we head to the elevator behind the front desk. Taking the elevator to the top floor, we turn left, through a door to a little waiting area, and out a double door to the balcony. There we find Mr. Burke waiting for us. The pulse charge is rigged. Excellent. Excellent! Ah, the anticipation is palpable. Isn't it? When you have finished savoring the moment, you may have the honor of pressing the button. Oh, and mind your eyes, it'll be brighter than bright. Dogmeat barks in vain to turn us away from doing something so dastardly, so horrible. But we press on. We open the case, take one final look at Megaton, and flip the switch. Mr. 
Mr. Burke. What a grand display of fireworks. I almost wish there was another nuke we could detonate. You don't see that very often. I'm glad you're pleased. I had help, of course. Quite right. And you ought to offer her the reward we discussed. Now, all this bright light and wind has given me quite a thirst. <laughs> Where's my scotch? I'll send someone up as soon as I've completed business with our friend here. Righto, and be quick about it. I haven't been dry in years. I'd hate to start now. We then go to Mr. Burke to claim our reward. My god. What transcendent beauty. What purifying light. <clears throat> uh, allow me to collect myself as I'm sure you're anxious to collect your payment. I have been asked to extend to you an invitation to reside at Tenpenny Tower. Here's the key and deed to your new master suite. It's on the top floor, first door on your right from the elevator. <laughs> Enjoy your new accommodations. Oh, and if you wish to spruce the place up a bit, speak with Lydia Montenegro in the Boutique Les Chic. <laughs> I'm positively famished. I must get something to eat before I pass out. With that, we gain a key and a deed to our Ten Penny Tower suite. Since I know you're curious, we can head back to Megaton to see the devastation we have wrought. And as soon as we arrive, a familiar voice takes us aside. Hey, is that you? Oh, my head's still ringing from that explosion. What happened? It's none other than Moira Brown. She somehow survived, but she has become a ghoul. I blew up your town, Moira. Maybe you shouldn't have built it around a bomb. Oh, don't be silly. Why would you blow up our town? You're talking crazy talk. It was just a job. Sorry, nothing personal. Well, okay, as long as you're sorry. But I expect you to apologize to everyone else in town, okay? And don't do it again. Now, what am I going to do about work? And what's with the weird look? Have I got something on my face? And here we get a wonderful reference to Army of Darkness. Moira, don't take this the wrong way, but you got ugly real fast. Don't be silly. I just got some gunk on my face after the explosion. But that doesn't explain why it peels away in strips and oozes. You know what? I think I'm turning into a ghoul. This is fascinating. Now, where can a ghoul like me go to study these effects in peace? Now, if we've discovered the underworld, we can send her there, but I haven't yet, so we just wish her good luck. You know, this is just the perfect excuse to visit Rivet City. But while I'm heading downtown, I've been meaning to check out the museum. Who knows what I'll find? Anyway, see you downtown, one way or the other. And off she walks into the wastes. The town itself is a complete and utter ruin. There is no way to enter. Even looking through some of the larger gaps in the rubble wall, we can't pass through to explore the crater. But there's nothing much to see. It's a giant hole in the ground. We don't know of any other survivors other than Moira Brown. But she does seem pretty disconnected from reality, telling us to apologize to the others who apparently are all dead and not quite realizing the impact of what we We've done. But at any rate, we can cover that topic in greater detail later. Back to the task at hand, we head back to Tenpenny Tower to explore our new suite. To get to the player suite, from the lobby, we take the elevator upstairs. Our new player home is right around the corner. Inside, we find a place that is very different from what we found in Megaton. And yet, it's still familiar. We still have the same bobblehead collector stand. And, instead of Wadsworth, we find Godfrey. Allow me to introduce myself. I am Godfrey, your personal robotic butler. I am here to look after your needs and to keep you happy and entertained. What can I do for you? He has nearly all the same dialogue options as Wadsworth, which we already explored in my video on the My Megaton home. However, he does give us different directions since it's a new place. 
Yes, I believe this place could do with a bit more in the way of decoration. Speak with Lydia Motten Negro down in the lobby level of the tower. She has quite a selection of items to enhance your living space. And of course he tells us jokes. Yes, it's common knowledge that the irradiated cats have 18 half-lives. <laughs> I'll be sure and tidy up while you're away, madam. Thanks, Godfrey. All right, so a tour of the basic house is, uh, you know, pretty bare bones. We have a nice uh, queen-sized bed over here and a safe down here for storing belongings, which is unique. We didn't get one of those in our Megaton home. And uh, then this actually takes us outside. We get a beautiful view of the wasteland. Oh, it's so nice. It's so much better than what we get with the Megaton one. And we share balconies with our neighbors. Hey, Alistair. Fancy that. A visitor. I seldom get visitors, which is a tiresome shame because I'm usually relentlessly bored out of my right mind. <laughs> I love Alistair just taking pot shots at whatever he wants. But yeah, our little home is uh, right around the corner over here. Going this way does a full loop of the uh, of the tower. Don't know what was there. It's completely boarded up and inaccessible. But this will take us all the way back to uh, Alistair Tenpenny. We explored all of the different theme options with the There's My Mega. Wounded, madam. May I suggest you seek medical attention as soon as possible? I'm actually all right. There, Codsworth. Here, I'll take a stim pack. Just for you. Codsworth, Cods, Godfrey. Oh man, I'm getting my fallouts messed up. Anyway, uh, so yeah, let's uh, go down to uh, uh, Montenegro and uh, see what we can do to spruce up the place. Taking the elevator down, we can go over here to find Lydia Montenegro in, uh, let's see, Boutique Le Chic. Hey there, Lydia. Welcome to Boutique La Chic. I'm Lydia Montenegro, proprietor. Here you'll find only the best, with a price tag you can boast about to your friends. Good to see that old suite finally found an owner. I have all sorts of items and themes for that place that may interest you. Now the items are going to be the same as the items that we already explored with the My Megaton home. So let's go ahead and open her inventory and buy them. Jukebox, infirmary, laboratory, Nuka-Cola machine, and workbench. Back up the elevator and back into our house. We see that the furniture has been placed in all the right places. Got our jukebox over here. Here's our Nuka Cola machine. Let's see, where did they put everything else? Workbench in a handy spot over here, along with our My First Laboratory. And then this is going to be our auto dock, or our My First Infirmary, actually. Okay. Uh, well, that's great. Let's let's talk about themes. It's what good themes? to see you alive and well, madam. You're you're really starting to get well, annoying there, Godfrey. Anyway. Uh, let's see what themes we have available. Let's start with the vault theme. Feeling a bit homesick, are we? And here we are. Uh, most notably, the lighting is very different. Instead of that amber sort of candlelit glow, we've got a, an, an an almost clinical glow going on due to all of the fluorescent lights. And, uh, but everything else seems to be fairly standard. We've got the creature comforts of the Tenpenny Suite, just a lot of vault tech furniture. For example, lockers over here and consoles. Boy, they sure do love their consoles. Uh, here's our uh, dining room table, complete with vault overseer chairs. Lots Welcome of- Welcome home, madam. Thanks, Godfrey. Lots of boxed food and uh, all sorts of plates and utensils and silverware stacked up over there. More useless consoles over in the corner. And some seating down there. And of course, more consoles over there. I like the lights on this one. And there's a nice touch. We've got a vault sign above the door that says apartments. Oh, and look at that. Revelation 21.6. Right on the wall of the apartment. Wow. A lot of great vault details here that are missing in the My Megaton house. That's, uh, that's surprising. And we even have a terminal. We can't access it, though. We get the mainframe in the uh, My Megaton house. It's good house. to see you alive and well, madam. But instead of a mainframe... Well, good to see you anyway. Wow, shut up, Godfrey. Instead of a mainframe, we just get the the mainframe terminal. All right, let's uh, go check out the other themes. Let's try the Raider theme. Into the blood and guts look, eh? And it's a horror show, just like we uh, came to expect. 
Bodies in Graffiti over here. Looks like it's more of a horror show than it was at the My Megaton house. Look at all of this viscera and blood and guts on the floor. Which makes me wonder... <laughs> uh, I've got the same question about Moira back at, at, uh, at Megaton. Where did they get all these bodies? <laughs> I mean, did they go out and murder people just for these decorations? Oh, that's... Look at that! Oh, it's disgusting. On the podium and pedestal. We've got some graffiti on the uh, headboard there above the headboard. Where did all these bodies come from? Oh, look, they do look like raider corpses. This one's in raider armor. Uh, but some of them do look like settlers. Ooh, skulls sticking out of that one. Oh, nasty. And blood puddles on the ground with plenty of graffiti. And there's the uh, big nuclear explosion. Ooh, bloody handprints on the wall and everything. And a grill! Oh, are we supposed to think that we're grilling up human meat on the grill? Is that what this is? Am I a raider cannibal? Well, there you go. That's the raider theme. Let's see what else there is. Let's try the Wasteland Explorer theme. And the lighting is much more homey. As we can see, it's been toned down a little bit, the, uh, the fluorescent light. Uh, there's uh, posters on the wall and lots of signage. That's something uh, something typical with this Wasteland Explorer themes. Everything's a little bit more brown, a little bit more earthy. I like it a lot. Some of the same posters on the walls, but some new ones. I don't recall this, uh, this United States propaganda poster on the wall over there. More posters over there, a Giddy Up a Buttercup advertisement. And here is our big picnic table, complete with a hunting rifle on top. I hope things are going well for you today, madam. They are, Godfrey. Thanks for asking. There's our collection of human skulls and Brahmin skulls, I'm guessing. Oh, and look, there's the Lone Wanderer motorcycle. It is gorgeous. Oh, and that's new. A mannequin in the corner. I don't believe that was there in the previous one. Ooh, these mannequins are nasty and creepy looking. Sugar Bomb Snack Cereal. Explosive. Great taste. All right, this was my favorite one for the My Megaton house, but we're not done yet. Let's keep exploring. Let's try the science theme. You're the intellectual type, eh? And everything takes on a bit of a greenish hue inside with the science theme installed. But we've got some uh, blackboards and chalkboards on the wall, just like we would come to expect. And these, I think, are new, these x-rays on the walls. These look familiar, though. Didn't we see these in Fallout 4? <laughs> I think we saw some of these in Fallout 4, with the notable exception that um, there was a, uh, a Deathclaw x-ray. Yeah, so we've got a bunch of x-rays on the wall. That's cool. That was missing from the Megaton house. Lots of science equipment on the table here. And a, a chair, a high-tech science chair. Here's right sitting right here by the typewriter for taking down notes. Another one of these, uh, these electric tape reading machines. It's good to see you alive and well, madam. Reminds me of one well, of those good to see you anyway. newspaper readers that you would find in a library. Lots of uh, decorations on the, sh on the shelf over here. The lighting is really nice. It's easy to see. It's, it's easy on the eyes in here. And uh, there you go. That's about it. Thankfully, those mannequins are gone. Those mannequins were pretty awful. <laughs> All right, moving on to the next one. Next up is the pre-war theme. We've got some warm lighting on the inside here. A refrigerator over here in the corner. That's new. Where was it before? I'm realizing that there wasn't a kitchen before, was there? Yeah, I don't believe there was a kitchen uh, in the past ones, but uh, looks like we've got a clean refrigerator over there. A new photograph or painting, although it looks really burned and ripped. A teddy bear on a pedestal over here. And uh, here's that little trike, and there's the doghouse. Whoa! What? What? Do we, we've got a stuffed dog meat? <laughs> oh, this is really horrible. What? Why would we have a giant white dog house here and a stuffed dog meat taking up space right next to a bathtub that's just been plopped right down in the middle of the floor? Oh, this is weird. And here's our oven, our, our cooking area. Well, I guess it does beat a grill in the middle of the floor. <laughs> that's strange. What a weird space. Yeah, this is a weird space. Um, now, we, there was... Furniture was the primary uh, identifier of the pre-war theme with the My Megaton house. And we've got the, some of the same furniture over here. And the rugs on the floor. Lots of big, beautiful 
rugs on the floor. Here's an entryway rug and even a welcome mat. All right, it's feeling rather homey. But I believe we have one more to explore. Let's check it out. Let's try the love machine. Feeling a bit anxious, perhaps? And here we go. We've got a love machine theme going on. Uh, lots of uh, Christmas lights. Pink and, and uh, yellow Christmas lights in the ceiling. It's a little bit darker, a little bit moody. And wow, look at this loveness. Look at this big heart-shaped bed. Very similar to the other one at the My Megaton house, only uh, this erotic lighting sculpture is now hanging directly over the bed. <laughs> and we've got some of these horrible mannequins hanging out in the corner. This is fitting, though. A bunch of clothing on the bookshelves. Although I suppose there should be books on the bookshelves. Lots of cups and silverware over there. A little uh, reading nook over here, complete with a book on a pedestal. Hey, there's lying congressional style. Just like we found in the Maya Megaton home. Because uh, lovers are all liars, apparently. Over here, we've got a big Christmas tree with lights hanging out of it. And then back here, we've got even more of these weird mannequins. Many of which are missing heads and limbs. Not sure how that's uh, part of a lover's nest, but there you go. So this is the bulk of it. We've got a bunch of lights and uh, erotic art. That is the Ten Penny Tower Player Home Suite for Fallout 3. A pretty spectacular player home, but you gotta blow up Megaton to get it. Which is a bit of a sacrifice, I have to say. Although Alistair Tenpenny is a fascinating... Thanks again for your part in paving the way towards progress. Oh, you're, you're welcome, Mr. Burke. Although I don't know how that's progress, but you're welcome, Mr. Burke. Tenpenny is a fascinating character. Never fear, this is not my Tenpenny video. I just wanted to show off the different themes we have access to with the suite. I will be creating a dedicated video to Tenpenny Tower because it is a rich place with lots of interesting lore. Ghouls that are trying to get in. Alistair and the rich people who are trying to keep them out. Not to mention Mr. Burke and his sadistic, insidious desire to destroy a bunch of innocent people at Megaton. We will explore all of that in an upcoming video. But like I said, I am out of town right now, so I put together this quick video just to uh, give you something for today, and I hope you enjoyed seeing all of the unique themes available for the Ten Penny Tower home in Fallout 3. Let me know your comments or questions in the comments section below. I read all of my comments and I use your comments as inspiration for my future videos. I publish a new video six days a week, so be sure to subscribe and click that bell notification button to find out what I publish tomorrow. And I've got a t-shirt shop, folks. I have a wide range of Fallout and Oxhorn inspired shirts, so if you'd like to see what I have available, you can find a link to my shop in the description below. And if you like what I do and you'd like to support me in a more personal way, consider becoming one of my patrons on Patreon. Patreon subscribers gain access to a private channel on my Discord server, as well as a bunch of other cool Oxhorn perks. But more than anything, ladies and gents, I'm just so glad you're here watching this video with me today. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you tomorrow morning, bright and early, with a brand new video.